Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com, how to make your own do-it-yourself Patriot themed knife. Now this knife is made out of an old piece of automotive spring steel, uh, but I tried a couple of different things that I hadn't done before. Um, number one, I wanted to uh, etch a design onto the blade, I've done that before. Uh, number two, I wanted to etch uh, design onto the spine of the knife and that's something I've never done before. I also never made my carta before. I figured I'd lay up um, a red, white, and blue pattern my carta to use as the scales or the handles on this uh, patriotic themed knife. Now I started by running over to my friend Jason Northgard's uh, metal shop uh, he heated up that spring steel, uh, flattened it for me, um, and basically annealed it. We let it cl um, cool slowly, and that gets rid of the hardness and it allows you to be able to work with it without ruining all of your uh, grinding wheels. I'm not going to show you the whole process of cutting out the outline of this knife. It's basically exactly the same as the last knife uh, that I did. I cut out the whole outline with a disc grinder with a cutoff wheel, and then I use a uh, flap sanding wheel to kind of smooth out all of the rough edges and bring it into the final shape. Uh, so there's nothing different with this particular knife project. Um, here I'm just finishing up the, the shaping process. Um, for some of the internal curves, I actually use a, a Dremel grinder, um, you know, a small, small stone on it just to get in, in at some of those internal curves. Once the blade is cut out um, and, and it's shaped the way you want it, and this one's kind of in the shape of a, of a traditional buoy, uh, buoy shape. I'm going to attach a bevel plunge jig and this just makes sure that while I'm grinding the bevel on this knife I, I don't kind of go too far towards the handle or put any marks uh, too far close to the handle and it also assures that the bevel plunge is, um, is basically perfect or level on both sides of the blade. That plunge jig just mounts right into my bevel jig and, and the blade uh, blank is held in place just with a, uh, with a vice grip. I can adjust the angle on this particular bevel uh, jig just with a bolt that's threaded through uh, the bottom of that angle. So I started the grinding process. Now this particular knife is, is larger than anything that I've, I've done before um, and it's also thicker. You know, I wanted to leave that um, spine relatively thick, you know, a little bit more than a quarter inch thick so that I have room for the spine etching, for the, for the stars that I wanted to etch onto the spine. Um, but basically what that means is that there's a lot of grinding to do. There's a lot of material to remove. Now the one inch sander that I have uh, is, is not very powerful. Um, you know, it was making, making progress, but very, very slowly on this particular knife. I eventually kind of gave up and went over to a 4-inch uh, belt sander. Now I had modified the 4-inch belt sander previously, uh, just cut away some of those side rails so that you could uh, work on bevels. Um, this sander was able to remove uh, material a lot faster. It's just a little bit more powerful a machine. And it doesn't doesn't take all that long now uh, to get those bevels even on both sides. I did this with a, uh, with a 40 and then an 80 grit on the belt sander. And then in order to prep this for the etching, I wanted to polish uh, the blade. So I just used an oscillating sander. I started with an 80 grit, um, went up to a 220. And then I polished it uh, actually by hand beyond that 220. Uh, I polished with a, a 400 grit emery, an 800, and a 1500. Uh, they didn't take a lot of time. I really got rid of most of those, uh, or all of the deep scratches with the, uh, with the sander. And then the polishing by hand was really just to, uh, to, you know, to finish off to the level uh, that I wanted the blade polished. And after the polishing, and before the etching, um, you really want to heat treat the knife or the blade 
and also then uh, stick it in an oven and temper it. Um, I usually put them in a 375 degree oven for three hours and then you leave them in the oven. You don't open the door, you let it cool overnight. Um, that makes the knife less brittle. This is the heat treating process. I ran, ran back over to my friend Jason's place. He heated up that blade, um, cherry red, non-metallic, and quenched it in oil. And then after that, we did the, uh, the tempering. This is the design that I came up with for the blade etching. It's basically just an eagle with some stars. I thought it was very, very USA, very patriotic looking. Um, I transferred that um, onto a, a clear transfer film, cut it out, and then I'm um, going to use an electro um, etching process. Now, I, I covered in detail the whole process of uh, metal etching on a separate video, and I'll, I'll put a link on this video uh, that really details you know, every step that you have to go through. It's a fairly easy process. It just uses an uh, automotive 12-volt battery charger, um, a little bit of salt water, uh, and a piece of gauze, um, you know, along with some sort of uh, way of blocking the areas that you don't want etched. And I, I use a film. You could also use... Um, variety of different um, inks, wax, and all sorts of all sorts of stuff. But the end result is it it etches into the metal, and then once you're finished etching, and probably went over each area for 45 seconds or so, uh, then I repolished it with a 1500 grit emery. And like a you know, like I said before, this whole process I've, I've done before and I've made videos on before, and you can check out any one of those videos. This is the end result of the blade etching, so I was pretty happy with that. I think it really complements this particular, uh, this particular themed knife. What I was really interested in doing was the spine etching. So basically I cut out little stars out of a, a vinyl. And then I went over uh, each, I basically removed the background, left the stars uh, covered, and then I etched the entire spine. I did protect the sides of the spine, um, and I went over each area for about 10, 15 seconds a piece, and then I did, you know, three or four uh, runs through each area. So, you know, you're, you're etching the entire or every section for at least 45 to 60 seconds. And then again, uh, once you're done with the etching, you know, you remove the vinyl, polish it up with a 1500 grit. And again, I did a, uh, a separate video just on this spine etching process. I'll put a link up for that also. Uh, but I was, I was very uh, pleased with the way that these uh, stars came out. So that's the etched stars on the, spi on the spine of the knife. And I think they really enhance, especially with the uh, micarta handles, the red, white, and blue micarta handles. So on, on that note, it's time to work on the micarta. Um, and again, you know, I can't, just absolutely can't cover everything in one video, so I kind of broke this one up, this build up into three or four uh, separate videos. Uh, the micarta handles I did as a separate video. I'll put a link here. But basically, micarta is like fiberglassing. Um, you use fiberglass resin. I'm using colored uh, construction paper, and I'm resining both sides of that paper and layering it up in a press. Uh, once you have uh, enough of this stuff laid up, you press it all together, clamp it together, and let it completely dry. Um, what you end up with is uh, layers, different colored uh, micarta that when you grind through will show off those colors. I also laminated a separate piece of micarta, a solid blue piece of micarta, onto the butt end of the handle uh, to give it some additional depth. Um, and I included some inlays. So I wanted some stars on the butt end of the handle. I show you exactly how to do that on the separate micarta video. Once these micarta scales are done, they, they're going to attach to the, um, the tang of the knife uh, as, as would any full tang uh, handles. I'm going to use a two-part epoxy. Um, I actually mixed a little bit of blue paint in with that epoxy in case you know any of the epoxy shows. It kind of ties in with the red, white, and blue theme. 
Um, this particular knife has two quarter inch brass pins that are also epoxied into place. And, um, and then I'll put a couple, I guess about three clamps onto this knife and, and set it aside, let it dry completely. With most epoxies, you really you really want to let this uh, set up overnight. Just you know, kind of leave it alone. Uh, come back the next day to remove the clamps. And once those clamps are removed, that those handles are pretty pretty firmly in place. Uh, you can start working on shaping that micarta, cutting off the. Uh, the excess brass pins that are still protruding you know through the handle of the knife I just went over to a bandsaw for that and then in order to finish shaping um, the micarta handles uh, you can use the, the uh, belt sanders I also used a, a Dremel grinder it seems to work real well And then, once you've got it shaped, you do have to polish the micarta, or you should polish the micarta if you want that smooth, shiny, that shiny look. Um, I went to a sander and, and sanded at 80 and at, at 220, um, and then I went by hand, and I did the exact same process that I did on the blade, uh, 400, 800, and then really the 1500 uh, grit emery is what really brought it uh, to its final polish. Overall, uh, I was very pleased with the way the red, white, and blue my car handles came out. Uh, the star etching, um, the blade etching, all kind of tied into this red, white, and blue themed patriotic uh, knife. This is some images of the finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel.